have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cast you. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armour Dyer. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armour Dyer. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the Armour Dyer? Who taught you to hate the common Armour Dyer? Yeah. Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tired of religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay miss, how we gon' make the slave rich? But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting tired of waiting. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armour Dyer. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armour Dyer. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Why they hating on me? Is it 
Cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans And I got gold all in my skin God all in my blood Kings all in my circle You touch one of my new thoughts They show no love for the queen Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans And I got Hello everyone, thanks for tuning back in once again to the original Queen Amadai Shakur show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your morning wake-up call. Okay, so first off, let me apologize for being so late. I was having technical difficulties, the computer was acting crazy, I lost one of my receipts and had to go back and find it, and a whole bunch of mess, okay? So that all being said, uh, enough with all my excuses, let's get ready to get black into it. All right, let's see who's in here. That Crazy Beach Aries, Pennywise, Vithya, Courtney J, Felicia, Juju, above all the drama, Claudette. Oh, Juju said, Queen is Queen, and thank you. We the People, Capricornus, G from the Land, Queen of Moni Huey, Jeff ATL. All right, Cassandra, Deronda's in the house, Latasha, Mission Vision, Hot Coco. Okay, so let's get into it. I see you all, hell no. Shavit is in the house. All right, so hey, Miss Peaches, RG Titan. Okay, so everyone, please get the likes up. You all know how to do the queen. All right, the channel band is real. All right, uh, Root Trackers is here. Uh, Buckhorse DC, Tasty K, Chris B. All right, Darnell, I see you, beloved. So let's get into it. Shout out to all of my loyal rogues and everyone tuned into the queen. And now, again, I apologize for being so tardy. I hate when I'm late because then that makes me have to postpone or uh, change the time on the backup channel. Okay, and we're going to be going live on the backup channel right after this at about 11.15. And we're going to be talking about all these whistleblowers that turned up deceased and this black woman who was arrested by the police, roughed up and all that just because she didn't give him her identification, which she really didn't have to do. And then the mayor issued an apology. So we're going to get into all of that. All right. So lights up, everyone, please like and share. And let's get into it. Uh, First things first, let's talk about little mama. Now, Lil Mama was talking on a podcast the other day that Chris Beast Air said, we're here for a queen no matter what time it is. <laughs> Thank you, beloved. Hey, Dervis. Okay, so Lil Mama was talking on a podcast uh, days ago, and she almost started crying when she was talking about the incident with Jay-Z and uh, Alicia Keys when she joined them on stage. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up. And then as far as the clip from where she actually went onto the stage, I have that in there also. But of course, I muted the sound because they were singing. I don't need any problems with screw tube. Y'all know how they get down. All right. And so like up, everyone. Please like and share. You make sure I'm pulling up the right one. I have all these videos queued. Okay, here we go. In the beginning, I was hurt. Tyrese called my phone as soon as I got home. He was like, bro, you ain't tell me you was performing. First of all, my heart is racing. I'm already mad, embarrassed. I'm like, ah, you up. crazy, Ty. <laughs> Why would you say something like that? Performing. <laughs> That's crazy. And I had to deal with like, I love on the radio in the morning. Wendy Williams, Angie Martinez, who she talked to Jay. Mm. And he was just like, yeah, you know, I didn't like it. And he was so angry. And I was just trying my best to do everything I could. After a while, I was like, forgive yourself, bro. Move forward. That ain't make you like depressed or nothing? Bro, I was hurt. I was depressed. I was like, yo, what's going on? And then you got everybody telling you like, you're doing bad. You People pointing at you like, what did you do? How was you able to get through that? Mm, 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 mm. I be thinking about like real life stuff that people go through, bro. And I be like, so blessed. I met a girl, she had a fight in Brooklyn, a train station. She trying to get shorty off her. The girl coming up to her, she leaving the train station now. She going through the turnstile. Shorty coming up to her being an aggressor. I don't know where she got what from, a knife or something. And she pushed shorty or whatever she did to protect herself, killed the girl. When I went to go visit Rikers Island, she was holding my hand like, get me out of here. Mm. I don't belong here. I'm protecting myself. People going through worse shit than me, bro. And that's what helped me be like, yo, I'm good.
You all remember that infamous moment? Let me tell you all something. First of all, I can understand if maybe he was a little upset. Uh, but really to cancel her because allegedly uh, Jay-Z got Lil Mama blackballed after that. Okay, I know you all heard it. We didn't hear anything else from Lil Mama for quite some time. Okay, you all remember that? And then you see, Courtney J said she made the performance memorable. It was bland without her. <laughs> ah, that crazy beach, Eris, where have you been? Living under a rock? Talk about what was that about? That was during the time Lil Mama went on stage when Alicia Keys and Jay-Z were performing the song, uh, what was it called? New York or Empire State of Mind. That was the song. And so because she's from New York, she was proud and she liked the song. So she went up there. She just helped herself, invited herself on stage. All right. That's right. Tan said Jay tried to destroy that girl. He did. All of a sudden, so petty. That should let you know how petty he is. And here's the thing. You notice how Beyonce tried to hold Lil Mama back from going up there? Well, that's because she already knew Jay-Z was going to be ticked off, okay? I'm sure she knows his temper better than anyone. All uh, right? That crazy Miss Eric said, you know it, queen. <laughs> and so anyway, I always thought the backlash was over, was overkill. Yeah, it was, Perplex. It absolutely was. He was doing the most, okay? But so anyway, let's talk about that time in 2021. And I reported on this um, back then when Jay-Z uh, got a call from the feds and they told him, to delete some sensitive emails. And I had questions because I was like, first of all, uh, what do they mean delete these sensitive emails? Because he'd already been in some trouble. He'd already had a, uh, been accused by a judge of deleting evidence for this case where somebody was suing him. I think it was a perfume or a cologne company. But anyway, let me dig these receipts up. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you to Vance. Now, here's what they say. Feds is watching. Jay-Z urged by FBI to delete sensitive emails. Can't ignore it. That's the fastest way to get it started. Now, that's a line from one of Jay-Z's songs from 1997 called Streets is Watching. According to Complex, Jay-Z was warned by the FBI to delete his emails as he was the target of a recent hacker attack. Now, a source revealed to Complex that there was an imminent attack coming to his email account and federal officials advised Hope to delete all of his emails just to make sure uh, they wouldn't be in, there wouldn't be any issues moving forward. Uh, the report doesn't go any deeper. OK, so I find it interesting because how did they know that somebody was going to hack his emails? That's what I just like to know. And y'all know, I think Jay-Z's the feds. OK, I absolutely think he's the feds. All right. He's sitting up there working with Desiree Perez, who's a known informant. That's already been verified. I showed you the receipts, okay? As well as her husband was working for Rock Nation at 1.2, allegedly. And um, also <laughs> faced federal charges. Okay, please pay attention. And then, not to mention, uh, other sources in the music industry have alluded to the fact that he was a fan. And so I'm just saying, him and P. Diddy. So I find that all interesting, but let me continue. Let me continue. Feds warned Jay-Z to delete sensitive emails. Okay, here's another one. It comes amid a breach of contract lawsuit with Perlux Fragrances about the about a cologne the rapper launched with the company in 2013. I never even knew Jay-Z had a cologne. It must not have smelled like nothing. But anyway, Jay-Z has reportedly been warned by the FBI to delete any sensitive emails and put on an alert of an imminent hack. So it comes after a judge ruled last year that the rapper had destroyed evidence relevant to a trial with Perlux, Perlux Fragrances, where he was sued for breach of contract and alleged to not have properly promoted a new fragrance he launched uh, with the brand, allegations he denies. Now, the rapper has also been involved in a host of lawsuits. Uh, back in July, Damon Dash had filed a lawsuit against Jay-Z over the streaming rights to the rapper's debut album, Reasonable Doubt. And the new lawsuit comes after Jay-Z's label, Rockefeller, sued co-founder Dash on June the 18th, claiming that he was attempting to sell virtual ownership of the copyright to the, tra to the rapper's 1996 debut album. A New York federal judge subsequently blocked an attempt by Dash to auction off Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt as an NFT, which is a non- uh, non-fugible token and an official nft from jay-z celebrated the album celebrating the album was announced in another case jay-z reportedly filed a lawsuit against photographer jonathan Mannion, who shot the cover of reasonable doubt 
And in legal documents seen by TMZ, the rapper claims that Mannion used his name and likeness to sell merchandise and other uh, photos on his website. Mannion's representative told TMZ, we are confident that the First Amendment protects Mr. Mannion's rights to sell fine art prints of his copyrighted works and will review the complaint and respond in due course. Uh, so anyway, let me just tell you something. Uh, <laughs> me either, Queen, and I'm a perfume connoisseur. <laughs> Not a connoisseur, Deronda. <laughs> I absolutely love it. You all are something else, okay? I guess I'm a connoisseur too, and I've never heard anything about it, okay? I find it all interesting. So my thing is, why were the feds uh, <laughs> but y'all said camel musk. <laughs> you all are terrible. Okay. <laughs> Alice Child said his smells is for the island. Y'all are crazy. And so anyway, I'm going to show a clip of that old report uh, that I did back in 2021. And I edited it because I had a clip of a video in there and uh, I got a, a copyright claim so of that back then. So I took it out. Let's talk about Jay-Z. Because I found this very interesting. Okay, so listen, they say feds watching Jay-Z, he was urged by the FBI to delete sensitive emails. Now, can't ignore it. The fastest way to get exhorted extorted. This is what Jay-Z um, rapped about in 1997, right? Now, according to Complex, Jay-Z was warned by the FBI to delete his emails as he was the target of a recent hacker attack. Now, a source revealed to Complex that there was an intimate attack coming to his email, his email account, and federal officials advised Ho to delete all of his emails just to make sure there wouldn't be any issues moving forward. Now, the report doesn't go any deeper as far as the details pertaining to if Jay-Z did, in fact, delete the emails or not, or have his account, his account security compromised. Now, the Brooklyn billionaire most likely has sensitive information in his emails, and he uses it to communicate with some of his hip-hop friends. Earlier in November, Hit Boy revealed that Jay-Z's email, or Jay-Z emailed him with the next morning, emailed him the next morning after his drunken rants at the King's Disease 2 release party where he took shots at Kanye West. I'm going to show a video in just a moment. Now he says, I woke up at six in the morning, niggas blitzed from the night before that Jay-Z's name was on Epstein's flight list with the 39 names that I, that I, I believe I showed this to you all last year, right? I did show that to you, right? The flight list. Yes. Jay-Z's name was on there too, but it was listed as Sean Carter. We all know that's his real government name, right? He was on there, but here's the thing. Um, my whole question is, how did the feds know that Jay-Z needed to check his emails? How did they not only know that he needed to check his emails, but what were they doing looking at his emails? I'm just curious. So why were they watching his emails is my whole point. Now, that all sounds suspicious. Um, four for four, watch me say, sounds like Jaden pissed off someone. Maybe he has, but at the end of the day, I'm just curious as to why the feds were looking at his emails in the first place to even warn him. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. Okay, so I knew Jay-Z was suspicious a long time ago is all I'm saying. I knew he was nefarious. Uh, I was about to say nefarious. I knew he was suspicious, nefarious and suspicious. Nefarious. <laughs> But no, I knew Jay-Z was suspicious a long time ago. Okay, I knew or I felt or suspected, okay, in my opinion, that he had something to do with the feds a long time ago. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Uh, Lulu said because he's one of them. <laughs> exactly my point, okay? Exactly my point. And that's what I thought in 2021. All right. And uh, yes, on that list that initially came out about Epstein's flight log and all that, not that BS they gave us a few months ago trying to tell us that was the list, trying to make us think that was the list. That was court documents. OK, that's what that was. But on that initial flight log, yeah, his name was on there. 
His name was on there and so was Diddy's. Sean Combs. Leon Gardner said, we paying attention, Queen. Thank you, beloved. Okay? <laughs> this is all crazy. Oh, that's a hit, Queen. You got to... Oh, okay. <laughs> I do, right? Thank you, beloved. You know what? That's a good idea. I'm not going to say that loud. Okay? <laughs> Gail said, Queen got a new word for the day, officious. <laughs> Prayer said what's done in the dark will come to light. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then he did poor little mama so dirty. Now he knows good and darn well. He didn't have to do all of that. Okay. And also here's something else. Here's something else I want you all to pay attention to. I reported on Diddy's little low down, dirty, nefarious self plenty of times in the past too. And I, in one video, I was talking about that whole city college thing from a few years ago because i compared it to the same thing that happened with um with uh travis scott okay with that whole thing about the astro world uh tragedy but hold on let me pull that up real quick like up everyone please like and share thank you in advance Hold on, beloveds. Let me cue this real quick. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Likes up, everyone. Please get the likes up. Courtney said, yep, that was one big ritual. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking. Okay, exactly what I was thinking back then when it happened. Pay attention. All nefarious. No one even cared. They wouldn't stop pushing. Now, Mayor David N. Dinkins appointed a task, appointed a task force of top officials to investigate the incident and the city university officials. Hold on, let me go back just a little bit. One was promoted by Diddy. Okay, New York officials began to untangle events that left eight people crushed to death in Harlem. This, this was reported December 30th of 1991. Now, just days after the tragic event. Stunned elected leaders and police, medical and city university officials began sweeping inquiries yesterday to try to explain a nightmarish stampede that left eight young people trampled or crushed to death and 29 others injured at the doorway of City College Gymnasium Saturday night at a charity basketball game featuring rap stars. Now, the New Yorkers tried to absorb the fearful images of, of a crowd of pushing, shoving rap fans of victims, um, victims trapped in a small stairwell, screaming, passing out, being crushed, while others sought autographs amid the carnage or laughed in their ignorance. They say people were just going crazy. This is what Charmaine Jones, age 20 at the time of the Bronx said. She said they shoved and shoved and shoved. They were on top of me and I couldn't breathe. Now the stampede occurred about 7 p.m. at Jeremiah T. Mahoney Hall on the City College campus at 138th Street and Con Convent Avenue. Um, witnesses said a crowd of thousands funneling into an already jammed gymnasium surged forward, pressing those ahead. Now, likely a deadly human wave, the pressure moved through the crowd, down a stairway and into a well before a single door opened for ticket holders. Now, they were out of sight of the mass of, mass of the humanity of the crowd. The, the victims were buried, crushed, and smothered to death. They say there were three people under me. This is what one person says. There were three people under me and two on top says Kenan Gray, who was 20 years old at the time. I was stuck for 20 minutes. A girl was sitting up on my chest, says Lynette Delane, who was 18 years old at the time from Patterson, New Jersey. She says she wasn't even conscious. I just thank God that I'm still alive. No one even cared. They wouldn't stop pushing. 
Now, Mayor David M. Dinkins pointed a task, appointed a task force of top officials to investigate the incident, and the city university officials began a separate investigation. They say we have some of the they said we have some of the same questions you have, Ms. Mr. Dinkins said at a news conference. He said several times that he understood the game was oversold, but he declined to access the blame or assess the blame. He said, we're going to find out why it happened, how it happened, who's responsible if someone was derelict. Now, many facts surrounding that tragedy began to come into focus. Officials said, for example, that as many as 5,000 fans tried to get into the event that could handle no more than 2,700. The gate crashers may have sparked the stampede that 66 police officers uh, 66 police officers were there, but none were, were inside at the crucial moments. And that private security guards in the gym, even after recognizing there was a tragedy in the making, could not open more of the doors to relieve the pressure because the doors open toward the crush. So they were trapped inside, people. Now, officials noted that the tragedy was so isolated in the stairwell that the basketball game was being played inside and confusion reigned on the landing above and that hardly anyone knew it was even happening until it was all over. Officials and witnesses also said that emergency medical service workers did not arrive until half an hour after the stampede and by then, they were mobbed trying to reach the victims. Lynn Shulman, an EMS spokeswoman, said the first call came around 7.17 p.m. They did not suggest the seriousness of what was happening, and it was not until 7.30 p.m. that it became apparent that it was a high-priority incident. So they say witnesses, in the meantime, told of a crowd of teenagers and young people that degenerated into a mob of rowdy, tough talking youths who cut lines and vowed to rush the doors as soon as they opened. The request to hold what was billed as the first annual Heavy D and Puff Daddy celebrity charity basketball game was made to city college officials on December the 1st by the evening, uh, by the evening student governments. The application did not specify the size of the expected audience, but school officials expected a sellout crowd for a gym that holds 2,700 people in its bleachers. About 1,500 tickets were sold by that Friday for $12 each. Now, the other 1,200 were sold at the door for 200, uh, I'm sorry, for $20. Handbill said the profits were to be donated to the AIDS Education Outreach Program. Now, the crowd began to gather outside the gymnasium on Convent Avenue about 3 p.m. Then by 5 p.m., when the first police contingent arrived, the crowd had swelled to thousands and they were milling around and disorganized. The police department's chief of patrol, Mario A. Salvagi, said. Now, the doors opened shortly after 5 p.m. Two lines then formed, one for ticket holders and another for those who wanted to purchase their tickets inside. Many witnesses said, however, that hundreds of people without tickets began to cut into the lines, pushing and shoving, growing rowdier by the minutes. For more than an hour, as tensions mounted and occasional fights broke out, each line funneled through a separate entrance of double glass doors at the street level, then moved through a glass walled lobby and down a 12 foot wide staircase to the basement level entrance to the gymnasium. On the basement landing was a row of four orange metal doors, each opening toward the incoming crowd, but only one door was left open, allowing first the ticket holders and then those who wanted to purchase their tickets to go through singly or in small groups. The game was supposed to start at 6 p.m but it was already 7 p.m. when they approached. It had not yet begun, and the stands were almost filled to capacity. The lines had almost stopped moving, and witnesses said there were more than 2,000 people still outside waiting to get in when the game finally began. They say what touched off the stampede was still unclear at, the point, at that point. Now, the pressure moved like a wave of humanity through the crowd. A glass door in the lobby shattered as the wave squeezed through the mass of hot, sweating people in the lobby and down the jam-packed stairwell where the crush was the greatest. At the bottom of the stairs, people began to falter under the crush. Many in the bleachers were watching the game, which had begun, and they were oblivious to what was going on out outside the door. Then an announcement came over the public address system. The game would be canceled. It said because three people had just died outside. 
So as you can see, that all sounds like the same scenario, but I'm gonna play you a video of what they say occurred. Hold on just a moment, let me pull this up. Everyone please like and share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, here we go. Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. And I want you to pay attention to the language they use when they describe the events and the um, temperament of the Stampeded hip-hop celebrity basketball game. It was on this date in 1991 that a hip-hop celebrity basketball game held in New York City turned violent, leaving a total of nine casualties due to the event being oversold. Headlining the event was rap artist Heavy D, as well as quite a few other big names in the industry at that time, such as Run DMC and Big Daddy Kane. Also, one of the organizers was none other than Sean Puff Daddy Combs, who was completely unknown at that point in his career. The gymnasium where the event was scheduled to be held only had a capacity of 2,730 people, and according to later reports given by Combs, they claimed to have only sold 2,150 tickets. However, on the night of the event, more than 3,000 people showed up claiming they had paid the $420 for admission. When the crowd was told that the venue was at capacity, they got extremely unruly and started to try and force their way in. This resulted in nine victims being trampled to death and as many as 28 more severely injured. The justice system ended up placing 50% of the blame on both the promoters of the event, Puff Daddy and Heavy D, as well as the City University of New York who owned the building. Okay. Now I'm going to show you a clip from a report that Geraldo Rivera did on the incident and please pay attention to the language that Geraldo uses. All right, pay attention to the language that he uses and the questions that he asks the family members of the victims who perished in that event at City Hall or City College. Um, Derek says, I remember that. Hold on. Derek says, I remember that because I graduated in 91. Okay. Uh, Mark says, so history repeating itself. Absolutely. And funny you should say that because someone who spoke about another event that happened like this, they said, you know, now that this has happened, we know that history won't repeat itself. But clearly it has. All right. So let me show this other video. Everyone, please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And make sure you follow the queen on Instagram. Um, Q, QW Avil says end of the year and holiday rituals. the feeling, and I've seen this expressed in the Associated Press and elsewhere, that the crowd itself became a beast that was consuming itself, bum rushing the door, crushing other youngsters without regard for the safety of the people in front. True, true but the promoters, they knew this would happen, or they knew it was a good chance something like this would have happened, and they supposed to took every precaution necessary to make sure if something did happen like this, they would be prepared for it, but they didn't seen them dragging people in and pulling them to the side. I seen people, brothers and sisters, get together like I've never seen before. And I'm sorry for the families that suffered this because I feel it more than I can possibly express it to you. What about rap music itself? Do you think the music form is inherently uh, kind of geared toward generating violence? In a way, but it shouldn't be banned because all you have to do is take the proper precautions to make sure things like this don't happen. You know how a black kids going to act once they get together and all these celebrities that's going to be there, they want to see them, they, they look up to them. So it's their responsibility to make sure that there's proper security there and these things don't happen because there's a chance that something is going to happen. They know this. You got to understand, America messed up. They flooded the hood with guns. So I don't know this, this notion of we don't have guns. Do you think, and this is a very controversial point, I want you to really uh, listen to my question very carefully. Do you think that black youngsters behave differently than white youngsters in, uh, in a crowd? No, I don't. I don't think they do. You put a bunch of white kids together, something's going to happen. But just that when, they come, when, it's, when they're white, you get more police protection. You get more everything. People take better care of them than they do us. And so 
I feel the way we can stop us from getting to that point of violence. The mayor's report for failing to adequately alert student organizers to the need for strong security and crowd control. Since then, Combs has maintained a low profile in the press, which he feels has wrongly portrayed him. Uh, but who was responsible? Was it the music itself and these crowds that wrapped draws? Was it inadequate police protection, negligence by the college, fraud on the part of the promoters, a crowd that some say behaved like a beast, even robbing the dead? This whole thing is set up even at my level. You know what I'm saying? Even at the level of hip hop, you know, they, things are set up to try to stop us from growing and being as great as, 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 as we want to be. So the same thing with Revolt. I had to go and, and really go to war with all of the distributors. Okay, so there you heard it, people. Hold on, I'm sorry I had my mic up. Hold on one more time. Hold on. Great news. Uh, but who was responsible? Was it the music itself and these crowds that wrapped draws? Was it inadequate police protection, negligence by the college, fraud on the part of the promoters, a crowd that some say behaved like a beast, even robbing the dead? This whole thing is set up even at my level, you know what I'm saying? Even at the level of hip hop, you know, they, things are set up to try to stop us from growing and being as great. As, as, as we want to be. So the same thing with Revolt. I had to go and, and really go to war with all of the distributors. In this particular case, greed and, and gain were major issues in the loss of those nine lives. I'm coming out. What is okay, so there you Okay, so that's what I wanted you all to pay attention to. He said it was greed. Of course it was. Okay, Diddy, a.k.a. Puff Daddy back then, he should have known that uh, every, it was oversold, okay? It was all about money and profit. And this is what happens most of the time. People put profit over the safety of the people, okay? And like the guy said, they should have known something like that was going to happen. But Geraldo needs to sit down somewhere, pay attention to the questions he was asking. And then he called the crowd a beast. He was really calling black people beast, okay? Please pay attention. That's the same man that was talking greasy about Trayvon Martin, okay? Saying that he shouldn't have worn a hoodie and all of that, okay? That's who Geraldo is. But at the end of the day, yes, Reggie, all the time. Yes, he's always saying something greasy. I then said, do you think black uh, teens behave differently than white teens? I'm so glad that the way the young man answered that question. He said, no. You put a bunch of white teens together, they're going to act a certain way. And the difference is they have more police protection. The pol they're more protected. This is very true. This is very true. At the end of the day, Diddy is ugly. So fame was his payback. <laughs> Emma said, I paid attention to his words. Okay. Yeah. Just real crazy, honey, at the end of the day. Uh, but let me continue. Because Diddy should have gotten some type of jail time for that as far as I'm concerned. That's how I always felt. Now, with that all being said, why isn't he in jail? Why is he still walking around here free? Because there's many people that have known or felt for years that he absolutely had something to do with the demise of Tupac. But hold on. Let's listen to this again, where Charlemagne the Devil asked him about it because he said it was in a documentary. And he asked him about him. Listen to how Diddy shut him down. I played this for you all last year sometime, but hold on. Now, it was this documentary that claimed, which we know wasn't true. Yeah, yeah, check this out. We don't, we don't talk about things that are nonsense. We don't even entertain nonsense, my brother. So we're not even going to even go there with all due respect. But I appreciate you as a journalist asking. Okay. Thank you. Because you, listen, seven years ago, I'd have been like, yo, did you hide somebody to kill Bob? But no, you have to do it like a journalist. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, we wouldn't even get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's Which we never believed, by the way. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, Charlemagne, speak for yourself. Talk about which we never believe, by the way. Well, first of all, if you never believed it, why are you asking the question? That's for number one. And for two, clearly somebody believed it. That's why they put it in the documentary that he was talking about, okay? He's just afraid of Diddy, as are many people, uh, supposedly. All right. Now, I was reading an article last night where they interviewed journalist Chuck Phillips, the one who initially wrote that LA Times report, uh, stating that Diddy absolutely had something to do uh, with Tupac's demise. And then he had to retract it and all of that. But I was reading an interview that he did, and he was talking about, they were asking him about the Quad Studio incident. And he said that he got it on good information from people that he spoke with that Diddy may not necessarily have given the order for that to happen, but he absolutely knew ahead of time that it was going to happen. And he also said that Diddy changes his name like he changes his clothes. Leonard ain't going to ask Dookie, shoot, the tough questions. No, he isn't. Absolutely. That's what he isn't going to do. Okay? And here's the thing. All these people, many people in the hip-hop industry have said that they think Diddy did it. Okay? Or they've alluded to that. Eminem put it in his rap song, but then he came and uh, uh, apologized to Diddy and said something about he likes Diddy. Don't be mad. It was just lyrics or something like that. See, people are scared of Diddy at the end of the day. So many people are afraid of him. And why are people afraid of him? Well, because he's been so protected. Because he's been so protected. And there's another one of my old videos that I was looking at yesterday. And uh, I even mentioned that dude, Les Wexner. You all remember Les Wexner? The one that was friends and I believe lovers, a lover of Jeffrey Epstein's. They shared a bank account and all of that. Uh, the man who owns The Limited and other stores like Bath and Body Works. Well... I was talking about Diddy in another video from a few years ago and him as well. So I'll show that another time. Uh, but anyway, I find it also interesting that everybody has all these suspicions about Diddy for a myriad of different things. OK, specifically people falling off the face of the earth. OK, blowing up people's cars, dangling people over balconies. OK, all of these things that people have alleged that he's done breaking people, women's noses, all sorts of things. And I'm talking about prior to Cassie's lawsuit coming out. People have been saying these things for years. Okay, Lori Ann Gibson being beat up allegedly on the set of making the band. Him hitting allegedly Capricorn. Uh, what's her name? Lauren London's sister. Okay, all this stuff. And he never got any consequences. That crazy speech Eric said, very interesting, Queen. Thank you. Okay, never got any consequences. And I find it interesting that he's still to this day walking around scot free. But let's let's wait and see what's gonna come out at the trial of Dwayne Keefe D. Davis because I have a whole lot of questions. Now, with that all being said, I'm gonna go to some rare footage of uh Tupac. Everyone, please get the lights up. Thank you in advance. This is a um a collage of videos. That they were talking about is called Soldier Story. And it wasn't about killing cops at all. That's just what the media took, because you know they're going to take what they want. It was about somebody who was so scared of police brutality that he panicked when they pulled him over. They didn't talk about none of that. They just took what they want. The media generally has portrayed Tupac in basically a negative light. Your song, I Don't Give an F. I start the song out sitting in a paddy wagon and the cops are bragging about beating up another brother. What that shows is what the media on any day is able to show you about anyone's life. And in reality, people live their life on a day-to-day -day basis. So I feel like my job is to tell a story, the whole story, and I can't censor it. Whatever you say, censor it or making it right, it's still censoring it. You know, we all got to have the knowledge of what's going on, and that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, so you don't advocate cop killing? In Not at all. Case. I don't advocate violence in any way. I, I'm just, I'm just curious as to whether the song that he was listening to had anything to do with cop killing or... No, not, I, Not I, I, I just said I don't write songs about cop killing. But I it did have songs. the lyrics don't in six there. of the songs on your album mention cop killing? No. Oh, that's they don't. not true. No, that all my songs talk true. about police brutality and self-defense. Now, that's something different. If we're going to talk about police, this man over here is in a really rough area, and he puts his life on the line every day. I got so much you know? respect for him for that, but look, we have to live in the same neighborhoods without bulletproof vests, without backup, without um, walkie-talkies, without guns, without tear gas, without pepper spray, without batons. So now we have to fix the problem. Talk new to that media is a machine that you either work with it or against it, so he worked with it.
They, these people don't see it every no, day. No, but what I would no, like to see is for wait, children wait, 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 in our country to have a better future than what you guys have. And that's not going to happen when he's repressing his generation and his people by saying they have no hope. What do you know about my people? I know a lot about your people. What do you know about my people? Just because you charity, give no, money, to charity wipe the guilt give away, does not mean you know about the young black no. man. What would you say is the answer to that? Violence? No, it's making music. It's what I'm doing now. It sparks dialogue, and that's how laws get made. That's how change gets made. Actually, and to me, religion, my idea of religion is this. I think that if you, I, I got to learn this in jail, because I, I talked to every guy there was right. in jail. I think that if you take one one of the O's out of good, it's God. If you had a D to evil, it's the devil. I think some cool motherfuckers sat down a long time ago and said, let's figure out a way that we can control motherfuckers. And that's what they came up with, is the Bible. Because if the guy wrote the Bible, I'm sure it would have been a revised copy by now. You know what I mean? Because a lot of shit has changed. And I've been looking for this revised copy, and I don't see it. I still see that same old copy that they had from then. And I'm not disrespecting anybody's religion, please forgive me if it comes off like that. I'm just stating my opinion. I feel like we get crucified. I mean, the Bible was telling us all these people did this because they suffered this much. That's what makes them special people. Right. I got shot five times. One, two, three, four, five. You know what I mean? I, I, and I got crucified to the media. You know what I mean? And I walked through with the thorns on. And I had shit thrown on me. And I had to, this the thief at the top. I told that nigga I'll be back for you. You know what I mean? And trust me, this not supposed to be going down. I'll be back. So I'm not saying I'm Jesus, but I'm saying that we go through that type of thing every day. We don't part the Red Sea, but we walk through the hood without getting hit, without getting shot. You know what I mean? We don't turn water to wine, but we turn motherfucking dope dope fiends and dope heads into profitable, um, pro productive citizens into society. You know what I mean? We don't do we don't we know we turn money, we turn words into money. You know what I mean? What what greater gift can there be? So I believe God blesses us. I believe God blesses those that hustle, those that use their mind, and those that overall are righteous. I believe that your karma, everything that you do bad comes back to you. So anything that I'm doing that's bad, I'm going to have to suffer for. But in my heart, I think what I'm doing is right. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm going to heaven. You know what I mean? And I think heaven is just when you sleep, you sleep with a good conscience. You don't have nightmares. And hell is when you sleep, the last thing you see is all the fucked up things you did in your life. And you just see it over and over again. Because you don't burn. Because if, if that's the case, it's hell on earth. Because bullets burn. You know what I mean? It's people that got burnt in fires. That means they went to hell already. You know what I mean? All that is here. So what, what else? What do you got there that we ain't seen here? What, you gonna walk around aimlessly, that zombie? Nigga, that's here. You ain't been on the streets lately. You know what I mean? What, what heaven is now. Look, we sitting up here in the little big screen. It's heaven for the moment. You know what I mean? Hell is jail. I seen that one. Trust me, this is, this is what's real. And all that other shit is to control you. If the churches took half the money that they was making and gave it back to the community, we'd be all right. If they take half the buildings that they used to praise God and gave it to motherfuckers who need God, we be all right. We be all right. Have you seen some of these goddamn churches lately? It's ones that take up the whole block in New York. It's homeless people out here. Why ain't God letting them stay there? Why these niggas got gold ceilings and shit? Why God need gold ceilings to talk to me? Why do God need colored windows to talk to me? Why God can't come where I'm at, where he sent me? If God wanted to talk to me in a pretty spot like that, why the hell he sent me here then? You know what I mean? That, that make ghetto kids not believe in God. Why? So that's a wrong religion. I believe in God. I believe God put us wherever we want to be at. Then it makes sense that God would put us in the ghetto. That means he wants us to work hard to get up out of here. That means he's testing us even more. That makes sense. A lot of people who know you, and I talked to them beforehand, suggested that, hey, you know, when you meet him, he's going to be something entirely different than you imagined hmm. and what the media is portraying him. What about that idea that, that you have been portrayed? And sometimes, I mean, to be honest, you like the portrayal of you just hard, That's thug. Right. That's right. Don't step on me. That's right. You're in trouble. That's right. Yet there's another side to you, too. What about that idea that you've got to be able to figure out where you're going um to me it's like um it is my sensitive side that um that likes to blow up the hard side because if my if i can if my image or my reputation could stop a confrontation before it happens i'm i'm, I'm fine 
You know what I'm saying? I know how it is day to day. It's a constant um, man ego check going on in this street, in this world. So part of that is just like, you know, that's my, that's my, my resume. But as far as the media, they look at it something different. They don't care about my resume. They don't care about me not getting in trouble. It's just another story, you know, and it's, it's a real story. They don't have to pay for it and they're going to milk it for all it's worth. As far as people, they want me when they first see me to humble myself. They want me to be like this and da da just because they're scared of me. But I don't feel like that's my job, to humble myself, to show you that I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat, unless you're a threat to me. You know what I'm saying? So when people say, when you meet Pac, he's different than he is, because when somebody one-on-one, -on -one, anybody one-on-one, -on -one, I believe, honestly, that I can talk. I believe that I have the ability to reason, I have logic, I have compassion, I have understanding. If we talk, there's no problems. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what happens. People use what they heard in the media, and that's how they come at me. And then, you know, we got a clash. All right, so with that all been said, I'm going to show another, uh, a few more clips. Now, listen, I just blocked somebody from my chat. New Diamond Funk Empress. Yeah, I blocked her. Now, I was sitting there reading her comments. I let a couple of them slide, and I said to myself, she says one more thing that I don't like. I'm putting her out of the chat. So let me just say this for anybody who doesn't know. If you're new to this channel, because I'm not talking about the loyal words because you all already know. But if you're new to this channel, don't come in here bashing anybody, uh, specifically black men, okay? She was in here talking about she would never bash the police. Well, that's good. You shouldn't bash the police. In fact, you shouldn't bash anyone. But if you have an opinion, you can give it. And then she proceeds to say angry black men, uh, she has to deal with angry black men every day uh, in Los Angeles or somewhere saying they're homeless and angry. Well, if I was homeless, I'd be angry too. Okay. Uh, then she goes on to say something else. Uh, when Tupac was speaking, she said something about, well, y'all kill each other every day or y'all kill each other too. Girl, are you, uh, honey, I'm sorry. Now, if you're somebody who looks like me, then you must be a raccoon. Or you're somebody who doesn't look like me, but you had a person uh, a profile picture of someone who looks like me. I don't know. But either way, I don't like what she said. And if I, I'm here to tell you, if I don't like what you say and you keep saying stuff I don't like, yeah, I will bag you from the channel. That's how it goes. Now, some might say, well, Queen doesn't like people who disagree with her logic or Queen doesn't like people who have contrary opinions. You can say whatever you want. You can have contrary opinions. Uh, but some things that you say, yeah, I will bag you from this channel, okay? That's what I will do, because if she had such a problem with what Tupac was saying, honey, why are you on there anyway? I'm sorry, please make that make sense. Okay, she sounds like a crash test dummy, says how to kick CT. Exactly. Now, right, so I just blocked her real quick. The queen, she had slavery collaborator energy. You you um was right to do that. Thank you. Yeah, she did. She really did. She reminded me of one of those ninjas on the plantation who, when we're plotting our escape route, She's over there telling Massa what we're up to so she can get extra chicken and biscuits. Okay, please pay attention. I don't have time for it. If I, if I get the impression that you're anywhere close to a raccoon, I'm going to block you real quick. Uh, okay? The moderators don't have to because I'm going to do it as soon as I see it. Uh, Queen Tulsa <laughs> said, thank you, Queen. Let's proceed. Bye, Mammy. <laughs> Archie Tyson says she's basically Kizzy on Roots. <laughs> <laughs> you all are terrible Kojima says um, Pop even said he's pro self-defense Not just once in deletion of police or anyone Yes, he didn't say it And here's the thing, let me address this before I go To the next video Yeah, I like the way he handled that When they were on the stage trying to paint the narrative That he was talking about deleting cops Because that's never what he was talking about He was talking about defending yourself You should be able to defend yourself against anyone Okay, anyone, that's what you should be able to do. That's your God-given right. Okay, that's how that should go. And that's what he was saying. He was never telling anybody to do anything harmful to cops at the end of the day. Now, we already know that some of these cops get out of pocket at the end of the day. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I like the way he answered that. So let's go on to the next collage of videos. That they were talking about is called Soldier Story. And it wasn't about killing cops. I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Tupac Shocker talks about the Illuminati rare footage. Good part about it is that we get to show the human side of the cops doing what they do because it is always my belief that cops are just a gang unto themselves. 
with the good and the bad. Just like I believe the gangbangers in the street got good and bad, like police officers do. They got stress and they got character flaws that come from their lifestyles. I could be the, the best actor anybody ever seen, given the chance, the opportunity, and the experience, and the lessons from people, I could be the best. But right now, I don't even wish to be the best. I just want to be one of them. If you look at it from a stereotypical point of view, like how people say, you know, all your troubles with the law, how could you play a cop? Just from a stereotypical point of view, who could play a cop better? I've seen them and they're evil when, when they think nobody's looking. I've seen the compassion. I've seen the anger. I've seen the, the jealousy. I've seen the fear. I've seen respect. And I've seen hate from cops more than anybody. You know what I mean? I've been there. I just got out of maximum penitentiary. I got arrested like 12 times last year, you know what I mean? Some my, some my mistake, some destiny, some fate, and some unwarranted, you know what I mean? But for whatever reason, I got to see police more than I wanted to. So for that reason alone, I'm the perfect perfect choice for the, for the role. I can't explain why I shine and no one else shines. I think everybody shines and different things and a lot of things I can't do I can't play basketball like every other black person in America but I can act I, I know how to go to that true spot in myself because I'm there every day I can be me I can be whoever because I'm true to me I can go to neutral easily a lot of people black white Mexican young or old fat or skinny have a problem being true to themselves. they have a problem looking in the mirror and looking directly into their own souls the reason I sell six million records, the reason I can go to jail and come out without a scratch, the reason I can walk around, the reason I am who I am today is because I can look directly into my face and find my soul. It's there. It's not sold. I didn't sell it. It's still within me. I still feel it. My heart is still connected to my body. So I, I could, any character, I'm going to bring that intensity, that truth, that honesty to it because I have to repay for, for that blessing from black Jesus, from God, have to pay for that by shining. If he give you the, the voltage and you waste it, that's the curse. He gave me the voltage, I'm a shine. It's not mine, it's, it's from God, it's God. Not that it's so special that nobody got it, but all of our gifts and blessings and, and our shrimps and our weaknesses come from God, come from black Jesus or whoever comes from within you, you know what I mean? So. It's not really tricky. It's, everybody can do it if they just can go to that spot. I guess all the things that happened to me in my life allow me to go there easily. This song called Already, called Fortune and Fame. Um, and it's like the hook goes, something we all adore. It's the one thing worth dying for. Nothing but pain, stuck in this game. Searching for fortune and fame. Something we all adore. The one thing we die for, nothing but pain, stuck in this game, searching for fortune and fame. That's what I hear. It's, it's, it's so basic that we all want to be famous and noticed and watched, and we all want money and riches and more. we all want to find us out of life from, a, from the most heartless gangbanger to the most uh, virtuous police officer. Level. You don't want any more. We asked 10 years ago. We was asking with the Panthers. We was asking with them, you know, the Civil Rights Movement. We was asking, you know, now that those people that were asking, they're all dead and in jail. So now what do you think we're going to do? And we shouldn't be angry. And my raps that I'm rapping to my community shouldn't be filled with rage. You know what I'm saying? They shouldn't be filled with the same atrocities that they gave to me. In the media, they don't talk about it. So in my raps, I have to talk about it. And it just seems foreign because, you know what I'm saying? So it's like... All, all the society is doing is leeching off the ghetto. They use the ghetto for their pain, for their sorrow, for their culture, for their music, for their happiness, for their movies, to talk about boys in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be another young. I don't want to be 50 years old at a BET We Shall Overcome um, Achievement Awards. You know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Not me. You know, I want, when they see me, they know that every day when I'm breathing, it's, it's, it's for us to go farther. You know? Every time I speak, I want the truth. What do you think your parents were trying to accomplish in those days and with the movement? I think that 
my mother, like a lot of people, like a lot of them, like Fred Hampton, Mark Clark, uh, Harriet Tubman, they felt like they were laying tracks for the, the, the generation to come. My, I think my mother knew that freedom wouldn't come in her lifetime, just like I know that it won't come in mine. Hmm. But it's a matter of either we stay like this or somebody sacrifices, somebody laid a track so we don't stay in a 360 degree deadly circle. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to break out and risk, you know, losing everything and being poor and getting beat down. But somebody has to do something. The best part of the story, I guess, is that your mother actually beat this rap. Ooh. Served as her own attorney? Her own attorney, never been to law school. She was facing 300 and something odd years. One black woman pregnant beat the case. All right, so now we're going to listen to... uh. It's two more clips, and this one is T.K. Uh, T. Kirkland talking about Jada Pinkett's lying self. Please pay attention. T.K. also suggested that Jada totally exaggerated her relationship with Pac, and he claimed that if Pac was alive, he wouldn't be messing with Jada. And I'm tired of her always talking about Tupac would have did Tupac wouldn't have with her. Tupac wouldn't have with her. I'm tired of that story. It, it, it would have never went down. Oh, Tupac. I know Tupac. Tupac wouldn't have been with you. If I'm not mistaken, I think Tupac, he had a fiance before he died, right? Kadada Jones, Quincy Jones' daughter? Exactly. Right. Sure was. Yeah, they wasn't rocking like that. Mm-mm. They wasn't like that. But in today's world, the people can lie so much. And, and once you get out there, woo, it could take off. But I'm tired of all that. So it's really interesting how you never see Kadita Jones, who multiple sources said was the love of Tupac's life, talk about Pac the way Jada does. Kadita never tried to sell her story or share any secrets about Tupac's life. And yet Jada, who wasn't even on speaking terms with Tupac when he was murdered, is now claiming she was Tupac's rock. But it gets worse, believe it or not. Jada also recently told People Magazine that Tupac had alopecia, the same condition she allegedly has. I don't think Tupac ever talked about the alopecia he suffered from, Jada said. After he was in Northern California with the police officers that beat him up, he started losing his hair. And his alopecia patterns were far more extreme than mine. I don't think Pac ever talked about his alopecia, but he also looked really good with a bald head. So Tupac didn't want anyone to know about his condition and felt uncomfortable talking about it in public. And yet Jada thinks it's her place to speak on it almost 30 years later? As for the proposal story, even if Tupac really asked Jada to marry him out of desperation while he was in prison, it's still weird that Jada decided to share this now when she spent the last 20 years claiming they were just friends. Well, you can already imagine what fans are saying about Jada once again using Tupac's name for promotion. One fan said, even if Tupac proposed to Jada when he needed her emotional support the most, she turned him down. She chose to ride with the Fresh Prince, who was the hottest upcoming star at the time. Tupac had to ride his storms with Keisha Morris and later with Kadita Jones. Jada was nowhere to be found at this time. Now that Will is on the decline and Pac is on the ascension posthumously, she has popped back up to ride on Pac's popularity. I will never wish Jada on even my worst enemy. And another fan wrote, I know Kadita Jones is fed up with Jada and her obsession with Pac. You don't see Kadita out here writing dissertations about Pac every two to three business days. And that was her man. Jada, seek help. But let's hear your thoughts on this. What's the real reason Jada keeps bringing up Tupac? Do you think she's still hurt? He didn't want her? Or is she doing all this just to hurt Will? Comment down below. Somebody left a comment saying, why does Jada keep writing these dissertations about Pac? Not dissertations. <laughs> and so anyway, like I told you all, Jada was clearly lying, okay? First of all, Pac did not have alopecia, okay? And, you know, I saw Chingy telling the story that Pac uh, got a bald head because he got beat so bad by the cops. His hair was growing in patches. Where is the thing? When he got beat by the cops, he had scars in his head. Okay, so anybody knows that if you have scabs and scars in your head, your hair will grow in patches until that heals. So once all of that healed, his hair was growing back. Okay, he could have grown his hair. You saw him in jail with hair on his head. It wasn't patches. So that's how you know she lied about the alopecia. You saw there was no patches. Pac was wearing a bald head because he had a receding hairline. I mean, look at his brother, Mopreen Shakur. He too has a bald head, okay? So Jada's just lying and paying narratives. That's all she's doing, all right? Cloud chasing off of Pac's name and legacy. Like, girl, sit down somewhere. I'm glad TK called her out. 
But anyway, let me play this last clip and then we're going to get ready for the next live on the backup channel. We're going to talk about these whistleblowers that turned up dead. Crap recorder said not seek help. <laughs> yes, that's what they said. They told us to seek help. Okay, if you don't get help from, uh, get help somewhere, right? Hold on. Now, this is the last clip. I wish that my son was here and that he could go and uh, lie down in my bed and come out of my room and say, Ma, would you cook? I miss his being. He was my son, and I miss him as my, my baby, my boy who I loved, respected, appreciated. He was my friend. He called me up in the middle of the night after he done had a hot date and tell me who he had a hot date with and what he did and how excited. And I said, to him, why do you think I miss that? I miss my son. Wow. Tupac Shakur. We all miss Pac. Jesus Christ, I miss him. I'm so sp spoiled by Pac that I stopped making music. Who, who do you put beats under now? Oh, okay, that was sad. I hate that Afini died before she got a chance to see Pac's killers brought to justice. And hopefully Dwayne Keefe Davis will be convicted and hopefully he'll implicate uh, Diddy, who hopefully will also be convicted. Okay. Uh, moderators, could you please do me a favor and drop the link to the backup channel in the chat, please? Drop the link for the next video in the chat. Uh, thank you kindly. Okay. Reggie said you're from Oakland. Really? Mm hmm. Okay. So, with that all being said, I hope you all enjoyed those videos. Um, it took me a while to dig all of those up, just so you know. All right. So with that all being said, thank you, Desmond. Um, Tupac's slave name was the same parish Cruz. Yes, Jeff ATL. Absolutely. Okay. So with that all being said, everyone enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Please be sure to like and share the videos. Um, also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you already are subscribed, please make sure that you double check every now and then to ensure that you're still subscribed, especially if you have not been receiving notifications because people mysteriously become unsubscribed. The screw tube says they're not the ones doing it. My question is, then who is? Okay, Please pay attention. Well, that all been said, I hope to see you all in the next live starting at 1115. And I will be on time, okay? Uh, so until next time, beloveds, each one teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember to keep the most high first in your lives. Soul all in my skin, God all in my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you're done. They show no love for the queen, why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther, shed blood like Kusa. You ain't helping my people, I ain't got nothing to say to ya. I want all the smoke like hookah. Talking reparations, America won't be great until they give us compensation. I'm like, uh. I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all at Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get mad up. So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with cheddar I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they necks Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people are waking Ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And now I got gold all in my skin all in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. done. They show no love for the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin? God all in my blood, my blood. kings all in my circle. You touch one of mine and you done. That's they it. show no love for the queen. 